I actually have gained, you know? So that's the thing. Like, there are gains that you've made, but if you don't acknowledge it, then you're just going to live in the lack of what you feel like you haven't, where you haven't gotten to yet. Welcome to Get Seen Unscripted. I'm your host, Jesse Malinowski. We are going to dive into acting insights, meet industry pros, and master the business. Don't forget to subscribe and share. We're keeping you behind the scenes and ahead of the game. As you know, this episode is brought to you by Get Seen Studios, and we want to invite you to one of our challenges that we love to start the new year with. It is called the Booked It Challenge. It's only $28. It starts on February 5th. It's four weeks, everyone. And each week we go over specific strategy to help you get more auditions. Then we give you specific tactics to implement into your auditions to help your auditions stand out in a big way. And then we also bring in a casting director to look over auditions so we can learn from those industry pros. So everyone, this is an incredible challenge to help you grow in a big, big way and also really give you momentum to have the best acting year of your journey. So we can't wait to help you do that. You can also save $5 by using the promo code unscripted. So everyone, it's already $28. Make it even cheaper and more affordable than that. So be sure to sign up everyone for our Booked It Challenge starting on February 5th. Now enjoy the show. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Get Seen Unscripted. Today, we have an incredible guest. We've been working together in some some area or another, whether it be classes or auditioning or something for over years. a year, over a decade. I was going to say it has to be at least 10 years. At least, at least, yeah. at least but more. Yeah. Everyone, she needs no introduction. It is Raven Drummer. Hello. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to chat with you because, I mean, you bring so much expertise to the table. Uh, a lot of people obviously know you as Tyler Perry's casting director, but mm-hmm. also there's so much more to you, which I just love. And yeah. so I don't know if you know this, but we had Jacob Lawson from Privileged Talent on the podcast. And you actually said something, I think, at a panel or something that that uh, kind of inspired him in a way. Oh, wow. Because he kind of had this like imposter syndrome of how he got into the industry, he said. Wow. But he said, he was like, yeah, like I remember Raven saying like she was a biology major (laughs) and found her way in. And so I thought that could be where we start. Yes. Because, yeah, you were like, I'm going to go be a biologist. And so I was wondering like at at what moment when you're like, I'm not doing this, I'm Uh doing this instead. Like, was there like a moment? (laughs) Oh, absolutely. So I, I always thought I was going to be a doctor. Like from the moment, from my, my earliest memories were me preparing to be a doctor. Like looking at colleges that had a really good pre-med track, I just thought that that was going to be my path. And so I got into the college that I wanted to go to. I went to the University of Virginia. They had a wonderful pre-med track. I think like one third of the students that entered in my year were pre-med. And um, and so I was like, okay, this is great. And so I took chemistry the first year, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done academically. I was like, okay, this is hard, but we should be good. And then I took it the second semester, and I completely failed. And I was like, <laughs> it did not get easier. This it, it got harder. <laughs> I was like, this is not kind. This is not gelling with what I. There was no ease to it. It was so difficult. I've never done anything in my life where I had studied and worked that hard just to fail. Oh. And I will never remember, I will never forget my, I was upset my very first year of college and I was talking to my mom and she was like, well, why don't you just stop taking science classes right now <laughs> and just just take a semester and just take all the classes that you love. Like just take a semester full of interesting classes. And I was like, okay. And I just kind of threw myself into the drama department and I never left. And I was like, oh, okay. We're here. I, I'm, I'm a theater major now. So that, for me, failing chemistry was the thing that propelled me into what I'm doing right now. And I didn't, like, I was like, am I going to get a job in my major? Like, people don't really, you know, like, get jobs, you know, as theater majors. But I did, and it's been the best decision that I've ever made. Wow. You yeah. know what? I, I love, you know, the the failing at this yes. is what brought up something else. And I think that's such a great thing to think about and kind of hold on to because 
failures that happen in our life, we so often are like, oh my gosh, I failed this yeah. like bad on me. Yeah. However, failures is what sometimes catapults oh, yeah. something so much better for you. It was my redirection. Like that yeah. was failure for me. It redirected me toward the things that I loved, toward the things that I'm like, oh, this I had, there was some ease in this lane where it wasn't in the sciences lane. Yeah. Why did you want to be a doctor? Like, if you already liked drama and that type of stuff, like, why were you doing the other thing? Why, like, was there some sort of preconceived thing in your head? Like, I have to do X, Y, Z, or what? You know, the joke was that I was, like, gonna, like, be on ER. You know, like, <laughs> that was a big show at the time. The joke that I'd be, like, a doctor, like, do a little acting on the side. I honestly, I feel like, you know, growing up, being, like, a doctor or a lawyer was esteemed, and it felt like... Helping people was what I liked to do anyway. I read all the books from, you know, I did all the pre-med things to do. Um, so I just felt like, I felt like it was going to be, one, a career of esteem, one. And then, two, I like the idea of helping people. And the body does and still does fascinate me. Um, I just am not meant to practice medicine. <laughs> so that's kind of where it started from. But I realized that... Whatever led me to want to do something as it res like as it pertains to healing, I feel like that's a part of my mission in the arts. Like I, that's how I view acting or producing or directing or getting this project out. Like oh, like I'm able to heal people just from a different vantage point, not through medicine but through art. Totally. I, yeah. I was going to say, like, I, I love that you were like, hey, I, I want to help people. And so you, your minds just immediately are like, well, I guess I'll be a doctor. Yeah. But there's ways for us to help people in so many ways. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think all of us, when you're serving, when you're helping, you just feel better about yeah. your journey. Yeah. And I think it's having that revelation of being like, Kind of no matter what my path is, I can help people. Absolutely. Whether you're like teaching yoga, whether you're like watching someone's dog, you're yeah. in casting, you're a doctor. It doesn't have to be at this like yeah. big thing. Like sometimes it's just helping people in their everyday life or helping someone learn how to meditate or whatever it might be. Like we have the ability as people to help and serve people no matter what our path is. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. And that's why for me, like I think some of my favorite actors are the ones that treat it like service. Like when they treat the craft like, oh, this is my service. This is what I'm giving. So those are like, so those are just some of the, my favorite artists that I like to be around and to watch. Yeah. How do yeah. you think actors do that? For anyone that's like, okay, that sounds nice, but I don't get it. Mm. How do I, how do I be an actor that serves? I think one, you have to get really clear on your why first. And then I think Two, you have to let go of being so results oriented mm. and you have to realize like, oh, I'm, I'm serving even when I'm auditioning, you know, like even when I don't have the role yet, there's still a service here. I'm still I'm still impacting whoever is going to be on the other side of the of the computer screen watching my audition. Like I'm serving in everything that I do as an artist. I'm serving when I go to a class and I'm with a scene partner and instead of me focusing on myself and me doing this job or this role well, I'm focusing on, oh, how can I help my scene partner do this scene better? You know, like those are all the ways that you can be of service in everything that you do as an actor, not just when you get up on a stage or when you get the role, you know, and you, you know, when you're actually booked, you can be a service in every part of, you know, of the way of be becoming an actor. Yeah. Can you, I'd love for you to dive in just slightly deeper into that idea, kind of more from like your point of view. Yeah. Cause I think actors, <laughs> you know, they're like, all right, that's fine. That sounds good that I'm in class and maybe I'm trying to like be there for my scene partner. That's yeah. fine. But like, in my real professional career and me trying to like make a living at this, can you talk about how actors, even if they are just auditioning, they yeah. are serving oh, the yeah. bigger picture? Oh, yes. One, it's like, one, we need you. <laughs> you know, like, I think it's this whole thing of like, you know, it's like actors are kind of like 
grasping to try to get the role. But like the truth is, is that the production deeply needs you. You know, I took directing classes and the first thing they said is 90 percent of of your directing is going to be your cast, you know. So I think that understanding that as producers, as the directors or the wardrobe, whatever, the writers, like we need your gifts, we need your talents, we need your artistry, and we need you to serve the overall vision of this particular story. So you are a very important part in the story, but I think those artists that come to, come to come into the project with this from the space of, hey, I'm a part of the team. I'm a part of making sure that this vision comes to fruition, and I'm going to serve that mission. If I'm barista number two, <laughs> I'm going to serve, you know, I'm going to be of service in being the best barista number two that I can possibly be, not making it necessarily my moment, but understanding that I'm a, a part of the fabric of telling this story, not my story. I'm a part of telling the story of whatever I'm, whatever project I'm in. You're trying to tell me that Barista number two is not getting the Emmy? <laughs> <laughs> you will get the Emmy, but maybe not for Barista yeah. number two. <laughs> so. What about what about the person, the actor that's like, well, Raven, I have auditioned for Barista number two. I don't know how many times and I haven't gotten it. Yeah. How am I still serving? Yes. Oh, that's a good question. I think for me and those, I've had people who have auditioned for me many times for years and years and years and have not booked yet. And I think for me, that's a part of it not being results oriented. I firmly believe that like your role is not going to pass you up. Like I feel like if it's for you, it is for you. If you are meant to be barista number two, you're meant to be barista number two. I deeply believe that. However, I think that when you take the oh, I haven't booked yet part of, you know, the whole auditioning, or I haven't booked something with Raven yet, and just, and you change that perspective, and then, oh, I got another audition with Raven. I must be getting one step closer. Oh, I got another audition with Raven. Okay, I must be getting another step closer. I think that's how you still serve, even though you've been at this for a while. And I think taking a, taking that a step further, right, like, you wouldn't be able to do your job without the options. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. so so I think like if, if everyone really thinks about when, when if you take any project, yeah. you know, it's a big it's a big puzzle. Yeah. And there's a lot of different pieces from the crew to the director and and someone like the director are, are a bunch of puzzle pieces. Yeah. You know, the cast is also puzzle pieces. And if you're auditioning, you are still part of the puzzle, but maybe just oh, yeah. not as many puzzle pieces or maybe you're yeah. just one puzzle piece. But yeah. The project still can't be completed. It can't come to fruition without all of the puzzle pieces. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing about the film industry, there's so many puzzle pieces. So many. Just within casting, there's so many pieces. So just there's a lot of, you know, to get any project done. As someone who's um, cast for large productions but also produced my own, there are so many things that have to go right. Mm, and it's yeah. so incredibly difficult uh, at any level to get a project actually done. So you serving, you playing your role as, I'm going to get this audition, I'm going to get it on time, I'm going to follow the instructions, it's a really big part in terms of getting the overall project done and in completion. It, and that vision that whomever has the writer, the, the writer or director um, has to make it come to fruition, for sure. Yeah. And so, you know, talking about more of those specific projects that you've worked on, and yeah. specifically with Tyler Perry Studios, I mean, that man is, <laughs> is a machine yeah. with what he's able to accomplish. And it really is just so, I think it's inspiring. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I remember when I was on set with you guys, I was like, this is incredible. Yeah. Like, how fast and how everything goes. Um, can you talk about the, I mean, so many countless projects that you've done. Yeah. What's one that really stands out to you that was really inspiring for you? Ooh. Ooh. Um, that's a good question. What was one, one of, I would say the one that stuck with me the most, I would probably say was casting the have and have nots. 
that to me my mom loves that show great yes <laughs> so many moms do yeah um that to me was probably the most fun show to cast because it was like uncharted territory like up until then um we had never done a one hour drama everything had been half hour sitcoms so it was like oh we're going into like a drama, you know? Mm, yeah. And then it was like, we, did, we were at a completely different network. It's like, oh, it's a new network. And then it was like, oh, we, in terms of casting, we'd never, we took like months, I want to say like at least six months, I want to say, to cast that particular show. And from a casting standpoint, it was like, so exciting just to go back and forth. And I want to say for the lead role, there were so many people that auditioned <laughs> for that particular role. And it was just, there was just something about that project that I feel like it also pushed me as a casting director. I was, I think I'd only been a casting director for like two years um, when we had started that project. And so maybe like a year and a half. And so like just to really be in a space where like I was working at a level that I'd never worked before auditioning people, you know, like we had kind of stayed within the Southeast, but with that project, I was auditioning people all over the country. And so it was just a, just a different challenge. And it was one of my most memorable and the most exciting times um, that I can think of as a casting director, for sure. Well, you know, I also see that as a turning point for the actors, because I remember auditioning for have and have nots oh, nice. and for like the first time i was like this is a series regular on yes, it yes absolutely and i was like oh my goodness and and i i remember you know the the uh other actors i was living with i think like we all had a shot at the series at some one of yeah. the series regulars and that had never happened before and we were like oh my god and so we were really exciting it was really exciting if that yeah that was the first show that i think every single role that for the series regular roles we auditioned locally and I think two or three of those lead roles, we actually cast them locally. Like the the lead, the for the character of Hannah, I saw her in a play a couple of years, no, a couple of months before this particular audition. And I will like she's just one of those actresses that like as soon as she walks into the room, it's like <gasps> Like, it almost feels like she sucks up all the oxygen in wow. the best way possible because it's like, oh, she's here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and her, I will never forget reading with her in the room and putting her on tape. And I'm like, I'm going to cry. Like, I'm, I'm supposed to be reading. I just felt, like, so emotional, like, doing the scene with her. It just felt like such a powerful experience for me. Um, so like, that's like, and like so many, that happened so many times with this particular project, but yes, you're right. Like that was one of the projects where we had local artists really being considered for like really big, huge series, regular roles. Yeah. You talked about Hannah having that, that type of energy. Yes. Can that be taught? Oh, uh, <laughs> can that be taught? I think, I don't think it can be taught. I think that comes with years of experience. And I think that also comes with you having the confidence in yourself as an actor. And I think that, I think that she just knows herself. Mm. And there was nothing to prove. There was nothing to prove. And it's just like it was it's it was nice to just see an artist just do what they do, period. Um, so I don't think that it can be taught. I just I think it's something that you nurture throughout the lifetime of your career. I think it comes from the yeses, the noes, it comes from you know, knowing your worth and your value. It comes from not needing validation, like it comes from all of that work is what I think she was at that place in, in her career at that time. Um, and I just think you have to live it. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. think it's something that you teach. I just think you just have to live your way to get to that moment. Dang, I love that. I love that. It's, yeah, it's not something that's taught. It's something you're living. Yes, and, absolutely. And if, and if you're an artist right now that feels like you're not there, it doesn't mean you won't get there. Exactly. Just keep living. Like, just yeah. keep doing it. Like, 
keep going through, keep having the wins, keep having the losses. Like you will, I think you will get to that point where you're like, oh, okay, I've I've proven myself all this time. Like I have nothing to prove. I've done this, you know, like I've had, oh, I see where I did get the call back or I did book the role or I did do this. Like, oh, okay, I've gotten to this place where I've lived. I've had the experiences, good and bad, that have led me to knowing who I am as an artist and what I'm worth. You know what's so interesting about that too, that for some people it will be frustrating is like everything that you just described, right? Takes time. Yes. Like there's no I way. Know, there's no way. There's no way for you to be like, I'm gonna yeah. do that tomorrow. Absolutely like, no. You, it just takes time and it and it 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 has to have the losses. Yes. It has to have the close calls. It has yeah. to have the wins. It has to have the brutal heartbreaks. Yeah. It has to have all yes. of that for all of a sudden it to like click in a different Oof. way. There's I'm there's a book called The Gap in the Game. And I have not read that book, but I'm reading another book by that by the same author. And in this book, he talks about the principles of the gap in the game. And it's kind of where when you're in the gap, you're always kind of thinking about like what you have not gained, like where you are not. Um, but when you're in the game, you're in your present moment. Like I am right now as being a casting director for the past 16, 17 years, able to be like, oh, I've seen where I push. I, I I remember how scared I was in 2011 when I became a casting director, and how I really didn't feel like I knew what I knew I was knew knew what I was doing. And then how I did the have and have nots, and then how I did this other project, and then how now I'm casting multiple projects, and I feel like oh okay, I have a, so much more confidence than where when I did when I was you know when I first started. But I'm able to be present where I am in this moment and appreciative of where I am right now. Now, I may have goals still, and that's fine. But I'm able to at least be present with where I am with myself, knowing that there's still a place where I want to go. But I honor, respect, and celebrate where I am. Where I feel like so many actors live in the gap where they live in this space of everything that they haven't done, like mm, everything that they want to yes. do. And so they just kind of stay in this place of where they're so aware or down on themselves for all the things that they haven't done. They really just haven't acknowledged what they have done. And then just live in the space of you being um, an actor that's like, okay, I'm pretty good right now. Like, I'm not as good as I want to be. I'm not as strong as I want to be. Maybe I'm a, you know, co-star. I'm in my co-star level right now. Like, live in that co-star level because there was a time where you weren't there, you know? So I wish more actors would just be present with where they are right now in their careers instead of focusing on all the series regular roles that they didn't get or didn't book or didn't audition. But, like, you are where you are right now. At least acknowledge that. I'm going to take that to a whole other level, too, because okay. <laughs> I love everything that you just said. But you know what also happens, which is interesting, is yeah. you're in the gap, like you yes. said, and you have the actor that wants to you know, book whatever it might be. And it, yeah. it reminds me of, and Alex White and I talked about this, when I would take the mega bus down to New Orleans yeah. to audition in person for those casting directors. Yeah. I never talk about the bookings <laughs> right. in New Orleans. <laughs> I talk about me riding the mega bus. Yes. Which yes. was which was the journey, right? Yes. Which is essentially the gap. Yes. <laughs> so like you live in the gap, you live in the gap, then you actually get out of the gap, but only think about the gap. Exactly. So you get stuck in the gap. Yes. And you don't realize, oh, I've gained. I actually have gained, you know? So that's the thing. Like there are gains that you've made, but if you don't acknowledge it, then you're just going to live in the lack of what you feel like you haven't, where you haven't gotten to yet. So, ah, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So I'd love to hear from you when it comes to you working at Tyler Perry Studios mm -hmm. and how it has inspired you in different ways as an artist. Oh my gosh. I, like, I, oh. I'm, I'm, the, the whole podcast oh. could be on this, probably. I, oh. Um, oh, this is good. I want to take my time with this. Okay, so. yeah. One, okay, let me back it up a little bit. So when I was a freshman in college, I saw um, Diary of Mad Black Woman. I think it came out like in 2003. And in my journal, I wrote, I 
want to work with Tyler Perry Studios after I started no talking about that woman. Really? I wrote it. Yes. I forgot that I wrote it. And then when I moved to Atlanta, I found my journal. When I was an intern at Tyler Perry Studios, I found that journal and I didn't realize that I had written that I wanted to work with Tyler Perry Studios four years before that actually manifested. Um so, thank God, really quickly, thank yes. God you found the journal. Yes, because, absolutely. Because how often does that happen? Uh, exactly. How often does that happen? We accomplish our dream, yes, something that we wanted. Yes. And so again, like if I would have lived in the gap of it, I like, oh, I, 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 the gain is, oh, I'm here. Now, here's the thing. I was an intern. I was on the lowest of the totem pole, but that is the gain. Yes, yes like, of like, course. Like, that's the win. The win is, oh, I'm an intern. I may be at the entry level, but I'm here. Yes. So that's, that, that's part one of my inspiration. So I say that because I know that I've been divinely placed at Tyler Perry Studios for a reason. And so I'm like, okay, I'm here. What am I supposed to learn from being here? And my goodness, have I learned a lot. I will say that I started when we were only doing like one project at a time. And now we're doing <laughs> multiple. Upon, Those I, days I are gone. When there was one TV show. <laughs> when there was one TV show. And now there's hundreds of episodes, if not thousands. Um, and I walk and when we when, when we were coming when I know and I work from home now so that's why I'm like when we actually had an office in the studio, I realized like every day I would drive up I'm like oh I'm like working in a miracle like I'm working mm. in like a manifestation of a dream and a miracle and it was so loud, so I think one of the things one of the ways that I've been inspired is um, I've been able to witness someone work at a level that no one else does. I think a part of the brilliance of like a Tyler Perry and Tyler Perry Studios is that like, oh, no one else is doing this. Like, do you know how hard it is to be an to be an artist and to do what no one else is doing? Like so many times as artists, myself included, I am looking for validation. Am I doing this right? Am I acting right? Am I directing right? Am I producing right? And then to do it and say, oh, I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to produce and release the projects without someone saying, yes, I approve you, is huge. And so for me, as an artist, I've been like, oh, okay, Raven, like the thing that's holding you back is you waiting for someone else to say that like you're good or waiting for someone else to say like this is good or waiting for someone else to say like, yes, I give you permission to write or direct or produce. And you are working for someone who just does it, just like who absolutely just operates in their authority as an artist and is not waiting for someone to say, OK, you can be an artist. So for me, a big part of the inspiration is there's nothing holding you back but you. Um, if you want to do whatever you want to do, like there's a way to do it. You just kind of have to figure out whatever your lane is to do it. And you don't, it doesn't have to look like what someone else's lane is going to look like. That's incredible. Yeah. And I would say how, what are you doing right now Yeah. based on that inspiration? Oh, yeah. I feel like I have been, oof, oof, uh, I've been in my own Come on, girl. You know, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm like, yes. I'm going to push you. <laughs> I've been in my own um, artistic funk, shall I say. And, and you know what? This is good, though. Look yeah. at this. It happens to everyone. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, I think yes. we'll get like, oh, this only happens to me. Oh, no. I'm the only one that's blue and feels bad. I, I feel like for the past couple of years, I've been in my own artistic kind of funk and I've been trying to maneuver through it and figure out like what is going on <laughs> with you Raven and I think that what I'm so what I'm doing now is I'm still being creative I'm still writing and producing 
I feel like I'm still kind of working through that, um, my own blocks, shall I say. Um, and I'm realizing that, and I'm realizing through working through that is where I may have done everything myself before. Like, I've, so I've produced my own projects and I, you know, I produced a project and I wrote it and I directed it. And that was one of the inspirations from, you know, I wrote it, I directed it, I acted in it, I, you know, paid for everything. And I was really in, it took a lot more work than I thought it was going to take. And I'm super, super proud of that project, even though I, like, I can't watch it. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> I'm so proud of it. Don't turn it on. <laughs> I, know, I, like, but... I, I can't watch it, but I'm incredibly proud of it. Um, but I think I lost momentum also. And I think that the momentum I needed was in people. Like I needed, I needed to now, now that I did something by myself, this is just me knowing myself. I needed some people to help me keep that momentum going. And I didn't have it at the time. And now I'm building a team to help that to help me keep that momentum. So I think a part of me is like, okay, Raven, like get out your own way. Allow people to help you make whatever dreams, goals, vision, stories come to life instead of taking it all on on yourself. Me, I don't think I'm just made for that. Like I need I need a team of people to help me to do XYZ. Hey, if you're an actor and you're enjoying this episode, we want to serve your acting journey in a bigger way. So we want to let you know that we offer a free class every single month. We do it on a lot of different things, but most importantly, we make sure that it is so value packed that you have no idea how it's actually for free. But it's our gift to you to know that we are so passionate to help actors on their journey and more specifically, help you on your journey. So you'll find a link in the description. All you gotta do is put in your email and we will send you our next upcoming free class so you can get so much value. So do not miss out on that. Again, you'll find the link in the description. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Wow, I I think we all need a team. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. I think having good people around you is so important. Oh yeah. And I think that's such an incredible awareness for you to have and to be able to share with everyone right now because it'd be so easy to just blame yourself. Yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, well, I lost my momentum. That's my fault. Yeah. That's on me. Like I didn't do a good enough job. Yeah. It's my fault. I don't feel good. But instead saying, you know what? I didn't have the support system. Yeah. I didn't have the accountability. I yeah. didn't have the friend or, 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 you know, co-owner of the production company or whatever yes. it might be to, to push me and inspire me and motivate me when yeah. I'm feeling down because we all need that. And oh, I can yeah. do that for other people, but I also need someone to do it for me. Oh, yeah. And trust me, and the, the, the craziest thing is like, I, so the project, I wrote a project, it's called Good Girls. I released that in 2014, so almost 10 years ago. And I would say at least once a month for 10 years, someone has brought up that project to me. At least like people are always like, I love that project. What are you doing with it? Where is it going? And I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> you know, like, and it's, and it's, it to me, like, I feel like the team that and momentum that I did not cultivate, like, it's come in people reminding me, like, it's come in people like saying things or sending me an email or whatnot. It's just kind of naturally come. And so it's, 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 it's for me, it's like, oh, there's still some, there's still some stories there that you need to tell. And there's still people who are looking for it. Raven, find the people to help make this come to fruition. So that's what I am doing. I'm looking for finding, cultivating, building the people to help me make this, these things come to fruition. That's beautiful and, and yeah. so, so important. Yeah. It's just so important. And, and it's one of those things that's easily overlooked Ugh. because, you know, there's not a line item, you know, when you're producing a movie that just says like great accountability team or great yes. team. It's just the line item of all the other things. You need yeah. the lighting, you need the DP, you need the editor, you need the cast, you need the crew, you need, yeah. you need transpo, you need all these other people. But it doesn't say like, just like, accountability momentum team yes but maybe the most important line item out of all of it oh my gosh it's it's crucial and like i 
over Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving break, somebody um, called me and they're like, I'm getting on you, just so you know, because you know you were supposed to do this and you did it. And I'm so grateful for this person. And now yeah. we have like a weekly call. Yeah, Because good. it's like, okay, this is my person to be like, but did you do this? But did you do that? And I think a part of the, the part of the beautiful thing and the hard part about building a team is like, oh, like, I, who, who do I have to be? You know, in order to now, like, I'm not just responsible for myself now. Like, now I have to become someone in order to properly lead this team that I'm building. Oh, I have to be, I, there's, there's, there's things that I have to live up to in order to effectively communicate, lead, delegate, you name it. But understanding that, like, oh, there are people here designed to help me get this vision out to help me finish this project and I need to trust and lean on them their expertise and their help as well yeah and that makes me think just about anything that you're going after yeah that you have to grow in other ways that are a little bit more like thinking outside the box yeah right like you're oh, talking yeah. about oh I have to be a better leader yeah you know I'm thinking about an actor right like there's not like a class that says how to master confidence. Yes. But if you're exactly. more confident, you're a better actor. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like here's how to master communication. But if you communicate better, you're a better actor. Absolutely. You know, and so those are kind of ways to think outside of the box that actually just help you as a as a person, yeah. right? But then help you in the big goals and dreams that you're going after. Yeah, absolutely. And it comes by like just doing it, <laughs> you know? And I think like kind of, like throwing yourself into the, the the deep end of like oh well am i doing this correctly am i doing it? like you just kind of have to do it like i feel like i so I, I direct as well and one of the things that i'm finding as a director is like oh i don't doubt myself creatively i doubt the leader in me you know like that's the thing that's interesting to me is that i feel confident about my creative decisions. What I what I feel like I'm still working on is, well, how do I delegate a set? Or how do I tell somebody that this is, the, you know? So it's interesting to me, like, yes, you're right. It's not just the artistic aspect of it. I feel very confident in the artistic aspect of it. It's the emotional, mental leadership, all those like business, whatever qualities, like those are the things that I'm realizing are very important to my work as a director as well. And that is the conf that's what I need to build. And it comes from doing it. Yes. You know, it comes from putting myself in the situation again where I'm like, oh, okay, now I have to lead another team or another set. Okay, how am I going to lead effectively? Mm, man, I just love that so much. And it's I th feel like there's just, I mean, there's just so many aha moments in that. And yeah. so let's dive into kind of you know, a, a big part of, of where this has come in. But yeah. you sold a project to yes. BET. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm sure there's huge successes in that. Yeah. And then kind of also based on what we've been talking about, Oof. some things that maybe didn't go as well. Talk yeah. about that experience, things that you that you learn, things that maybe you would change or improve. Oh, my gosh. Um Again, like momentum keeps on coming up. But, you know, we, so uh, uh, my good friend and I literally around this time years ago, um, we're like, you know what, we want to do a web series. And I love the fact that we just came at it from the simplest place. We're like, you know what, we're going to do six episodes. You write three episodes. I write three episodes. We figured out the story and we'll have three investors come in. And I, he was an investor. I was an investor and then someone else. And we're each going to give $2,500. So the whole budget was $7,500 to do this six-episode uh, web series. And we came at, at it with no intention of, like, no like no clue, like, where, where, where it was going to go. Like, we didn't know. Is it going to do film festivals? Are we going to sell it? Like, it was just, let's go in and let's just do a project. And, um, and it was a lot of work and a lot of fun. And we spent, and it was a great way to start. I think we filmed it in 2017. It's just a great way to just to kind of start the year um, with just doing something tough and creative. Actually, now that I think about it, all of my creative stuff, have I've done it in January for some reason. Um, and it's kind of like been how I've set up my year. Um, 
And I think with that, one of the beautiful things was like, everyone was like, oh, you can't make money off of a web series. Nobody makes money off of a web series. And the fact that we were actually able to turn a profit from a web series was like news to us. Um, I think one of the biggest lessons was, yeah, um, who, not how. Like Mm, it was a person that helped us broker the deal and helped walk that project into BET on our behalf. Um, It was a lot of, um, I would say one of the bigger things was, uh, one of the biggest things is like, oh, make sure you have like paperwork (laughs) before (laughs) this, you know, like, and I just mean like with everybody, you know, like this is just like, if you're doing a project, like, hey, here's what our agreement is, you know, or here's what the actor's agreement is. Like those things are important because then you end up, you know, getting, you know, connected with a larger network. And it's like, so where's this agreement? And then I have to go back and do extra work. Um, I think that I feel like that grew me in my, my business acumen. I felt like grew doing that project because there were so many things that I just didn't realize that like, oh, you know, music things and licenses need to be approved and how are we going to do that? Or, you know, the uh, Apple logo is showing in, you know, whatever. (laughs) Like, how are we going to get around? Like, there are so many things that like, oh, this is what's really involved with the project. I think one of the biggest lessons as well is that like the actual filming of it is such a small fraction of actually getting the project done. Totally. Probably of, of the entire project, I'd say, maybe 10% was in the actual filming creation of it. The whole 90% had to do with posts and meetings and lawyers and music and editing. So much of it and marketing, so much of it of the project was in the 90% and not necessarily in the 10. And it sounds like you were able to really move forward with that and just making simple steps. Yeah. Like I'll write three episodes, you write three episodes. Yes. I'll put this much money in, this person will put this much money in, and we'll just go. Yeah. And yeah. I think I think we need to do more of that as artists. We, like, messily figure, like, it was a very, like, unorthodox, just kind of, like, tripping our way to, to success. <laughs> like, it was, this was not like, oh, we had our ducks in a row and everything was playing. Like, it was not that <laughs> at all. It was just like... <laughs> We're going to do it. Let's find something. Can we afford this editor? Can we? Nope. We can't. You know, so a lot of it was just us really stumbling through the process of getting, you know, a project done. And that and it was great. And sometimes like that's exactly what you have to do. Like you you have to just like, oh, I made a mistake. I didn't. I should have had this done. Okay, I've learned from it. Now we can move forward. I mean, earlier you talked about how that confidence comes by doing. Yes, you know, absolutely. And so I think this is just so important because as artists, we can get stuck because you can look at the bigger picture and yeah. just be like, well, how are we going to do that? Or yeah. are we ever going to make our money back? How? In- instead, just do. And, yeah. and sometimes the just doing is going to give you something else that maybe you weren't even ready for, yeah, you know? For and, sure. and I think in your case, you were like, oh no, we actually made it all the way through, but yeah. maybe you don't, but learn something else. So yes. many other things along the way that serve <laughs> you for the next thing. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, I was not to be churchy, <laughs> but um, this is what it's, it's so interesting. No, bring us to church. I know. Do my, it. My, my pastor always says, if it's not God sent, it's God used. And what, and so, so many times, like, that's so interesting to me. And I'm like, even if you do something and it feels like you're in like the chaos of it, there's a purpose in it. Like it, it, it's going to be used for your good. So I look at, and the project was called Brooklyn Blue Sky. And there's so many beautiful lessons that came from that project. It was definitely used in a way like, oh, I see like this is what I like this is the story that I want to tell or I see like okay so if I do a licensing deal these are the structures that I want to implement so it was definitely God used for us for sure That's fantastic And that's it but yeah for sure That's fantastic yeah. uh so you you are a casting director, you've produced, directed, you've yeah. done everything, and then you also teach. Yes. And so, and this has like brought you all around the world, <laughs> all the way to like South Africa. Yeah. Is, how how has that 
How has that shaped you in, it brings us back to service, right? Yeah. How has that shaped you on your artistic journey in serving yeah. and I think seeing kind of the entire community, if yeah. you will, even worldwide? Oh, yeah. It's been, um, it's been such, it's interesting because I'm like, I know that I'm teaching, but it's been such a gift to me, I would say. Um, it's been such a gift one, to just be able to witness artists like have a break. Like one of the best things is like when you're teaching or you're watching or like I'm doing a workshop and I see something click. Like I see artists have those breakthroughs, right? I see them kind of like drop into the role. Um, like those, like, like that's, those are some of the most beautiful moments for me because I remember being an artist. I remember being an actor and like not getting it. And then just randomly one day it's like, oh, okay, this is what you've been trying to tell me, you know, the entire time. So for me, I feel like it's been such a gift for me. It's also been um, a practice for me too, shall I say, in terms of I'm practicing how to communicate with other artists. I'm practicing, oh, okay, how, what, what can I do or phrase or what can I say that is going to impact you know, whoever, whoever I'm te teaching the most. Um, it's been a massive, like, beautiful, fulfilling learning experience for me to be able to teach others. And it gets me outside of, I think it can, working in casting, there are times where it can kind of be a little routine. Like, okay, you wake up, you watch the auditions, you send the link. You wake up, you watch <laughs> the auditions, you send the link. You know, um, wake up, yes, that was good. Give my notes, whatever. And it's so interesting being able to kind of take a step back, really look into someone audition, someone's audition and have it not be connected to a, a role or booking and then really give them feedback or give them advice in terms of how they can, you know, not only master this particular role, but master their career and their life. So for me... It's been um, a big learning experience for me, but probably one of the most rewarding things that I do as well. I think that's a great point, too, that, you know, in doing that, this is actually even preparing you to be a better leader oh, for yes. that next, you know, Absolutely. and to be able to communicate yes. in a powerful way. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like, I feel when I am on set and when I am directing, I feel more confident because of all the teaching. Because of all the teaching that I've done, because of when all those times where I get to work with actors in a workshop or in an academic setting or in Africa or whatnot, I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is my stretching. This is my this is my exercise in teaching. This is my exercise for when I do actually get on set and have to communicate with an actor um, or try to pull out the best performance that I can as well. You talked about actors having breakthroughs, and I think all actors want more breakthroughs, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. And so do you think there's a, a specific way to get there? Oh, um, I think there's a lot of ways to get there. By the way, I think at the end, we just have to have like all, oh my, just all of your noises. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the, like, oh, God, yeah. Um, I do, I think there's a lot of different ways to get there. Um, I remember acting and being in classes and I would have a couple of acting coaches talk about how you just kind of like fall into like where like fall into the role you know or like there's like a surrendering um and when I think about like one of my breakthroughs as an actor it was when um I stopped like trying to perform and I just let myself be hurt by and this was an this was a this was an emotional scene whatnot I just let myself like be hurt by well, the actual scene like I let myself feel it and I was like oh I stopped whatever wall I was trying to put up of like this I'm performer Raven and I just was like oh ouch that hurt like that was my breakthrough as an actor I think that um, and it just informed like oh okay this is a tool that I can use for a lot of different roles and opportunities. Um, so I think there's a lot of different ways to have different breakthroughs. And I think the breakthroughs are not just like, oh, artistic breakthroughs, but it's like, oh, 
I've been stressed out the past couple of weeks and months or whatever that is. I think I think there's a lot of different ways to get to that place of breakthrough in an actor's career. It's just finding out like what what path works best for you. I feel like it's about letting it happen and yes. not trying to do it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And that's a freaking scary place to be, you mm. know, because you kind of have to relinquish. I think that's what I mean, like, like, you know, in terms of when they say you kind of fall into the role, like I have to relinquish control, you know, like I'm in control in so many aspects of my everyday life. And I present myself to you for this podcast or to my friends or to my family. But, oh, I have to be in the scene and just kind of like have to take all that off and just kind of exhale into it. And I don't know, like something, I, I don't, what may come of this may be something that's not pretty, you know, it may be like ugly or tears or emotional the things that I tried to hide. And that's really, really, and that's hard. And I wonder sometimes, like, is it too much to ask of actors? Like, is it too much of, is it too much to ask of you to be that vulnerable in a public setting and public space? Maybe, you know, but it's also like your job as an actor, you know? Yep. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. With that, comes our spotlight sign off five questions coming your way raven yes. to end this thing with a bang yes. number one is what's something you're super grateful for today ah uh, there's ooh, the noise again i know i know <laughs> <laughs> Adding them together <laughs> <laughs> yes that'll be the trailer for this just all the editing of my noises um i would say i'm grateful that my entire professional career has been in the entertainment industry and that I have grown as a person first, as Raven first, I've grown um, from this beautiful industry that I love. What book or TV show, movie or event even changed the trajectory of your life? Oh, what book, TV show, event changed the trajectory of my life? That is a huge question, Jesse. Um, I'm only asking huge questions here. I see. Um, I will say uh, event. I'll just say event. I think me getting... And the internship at Tyler Perry Studios completely changed the trajectory of my life. I did not think that I was going to be spending my life in Atlanta casting. Um, and that was a big, that was a big turning point for me um, in terms of like what I wanted and where I was going. So yeah. How did you how did you get the internship? Like were you freaking out when you were trying to get it and then you're like, "Oh my god, I got it." You how know, did that go? What happened was I um so uh, the reason how I got it, a friend of mine from church years ago, their daughter was working at Tyler Perry Studios and I was like, "Well, do they have internships?" And it was a little application process and the whole thing. And here's the thing, I'm a senior in college. Everybody else knows what they're going to do. Like it's like March, you know, April, and we graduated in May. I had no idea. Like, I have no plans after graduation but to go home and live with my parents and get a job. Um, so literally, I want to say about a month before I graduated is when I found out that I got the internship. Wow. And the plan was to just be in Atlanta for the summer. I literally had a three-month lease on an apartment to be in Atlanta for the summer and then go back home to New Jersey and find a place to work in New York City. So um, that's how I got it. That's what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was just going to be here temporarily. And 16 years later, <laughs> I'm, I'm still here in Atlanta, moving here. Actually, I would say moving to Atlanta was probably event, the event. It felt terrifying. I, didn't, I knew no one. It was far away from home. Um, so moving here definitely changed me, but changed me for the better, for sure. 
I love that because I feel like there's probably a lot of listeners that are maybe considering the move to Atlanta. Oh, yeah. And they're I also cried. feeling how scary that could be. I cried every day. Like, literally, I remember, like, the first couple of weeks here, I was like, I was like trying, like, can I make it a week without crying? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was just, it was such a big transition and it was so hard in the beginning. Like, Atlanta just felt intimidating. Um, it felt like the driving felt intimidating. The job felt intimidating. The loneliness felt intimidating. 16 years ago, it felt intimidating. Exactly. The driving? Yes, well, yes. The driving felt very intimidating. Well, 16 now, years ago. what I know, is now it? Now it's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so I would say that, yeah, those first six months were hard for me in Atlanta. But I would say after that, I felt like I finally got my groove, and it's been one of the best decisions. Of my life, for sure. Uh, now you're helping run Atlanta over it, here. You know what? Uh. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Uh, third question is, what's something within your daily routine that you really cherish? Ooh. Ooh. I'm I'm grateful that I have a lot of things in my daily routine that I cherish in okay. the morning. So, yeah. I do a... Um, like, I have a five-minute journal. You can get it on Amazon. It's literally called the five-minute journal. Okay. And it's just saying, starting my day with writing down what I'm grateful for, what, and then three three things that I'm grateful for, three things that would make today great, and then two like affirmations. And it takes five minutes. And so I do that in the morning, and then they give you a couple of questions before you go to sleep. And so that's something in my day that I really like. Um, and also I try to get a walk in daily. I It's ho harder to do it in the colder months, but I try to walk in the morning and just, Girl, you just got to get a dog. I, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes, I need to get a hypoallergenic dog for sure. Yep. But, you get a um, dog, you're definitely doing these walks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, like doing a walk is really, like I, you know, I kind of live in a place that's a little wooded. So just kind of walking in what feels like nature is something that I try to do every day that feels, makes me feel rejuvenated. I love both of those things. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. This one is definitely going to inspire a noise. Oh, and it is fourth question. What's something that you are currently trying to improve in your life? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, ooh. Ooh. I'm trying to improve. Ugh. <laughs> I know. I couldn't resist it. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm trying to improve. Um, I just feel like all my future guests, I'm going to be like, Raven had lots of noises. <laughs> I know. So my questions better inspire noises right, than you. Right, <laughs> exactly. I'm trying to think. Something I'm trying to improve in my life. Um, I am trying to take up space. That would be what I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to do a better job of taking up space. What do you mean? And what I mean by that is I'm trying to do a better job of showing up as the fullness of myself and not in, in any area, in any arena, in any room, and not shrinking and not necessarily feeling like I need to um, uh, fit or, you know, into any space. I'm really trying to be the fullness of myself Everywhere I go, in every, if, if it's with friends, if it's with business, if it's at dinner, I'm trying to really take up as much space being Raven as I can. How do you do that? That's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, but what steps are you taking? Yeah, I agree. Like trying yeah. to figure that out. But you're like, when I do X, Y, Z, because I think what you just said really is beautiful. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are like, that sounds incredible. I want to do that too. Yes. You know, so I know that you've started to find your way in that. Yeah. So is there, you know, you're like, I just think about it beforehand. I speak up when I want to. I Like, is there some, it's, like. It's a lot. It's And it's in sometimes really, really small things and then really big things. So sometimes that may look like me, um, um, like sometimes what I, I, I constantly am asking myself, like, what do you really want to do right now? You know, like, yes, I know you have the things that you need to do, you know, you need to send this email or whatnot or pay the bill, but what do you really want to do right now? So like one of those things is like, okay, I really want to take a walk or I really want to get outside or I really want to, you know, um, 
I, I don't I don't really shop like that. But like I really want to like I I I need to put on something that makes me feel good, you know. Um, and then other times it looks like just n- knowing, not being afraid to say what I want, you know. So sometimes that's like, hey, I'm at a party. You want to go home? Yes. You know, like uh, I, I'm my social meter is up. Hey, can you come to this event? No, I cannot. Whatever that is. It's me saying, oh, OK, I'm honoring myself by really being in tune, like, oh, this is what I want, and it's okay for me to go after and pursue that instead of feeling like, oh, well, someone may think this or someone may do this or, you know, oh, I'm rushing myself because someone's asking me for this. Like, So it's a lot, it's more, it looks like me honoring myself in the small and big things in my life. Definitely. Yeah. Last question. That's a good one. Oof, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. If there was one piece of advice based on the life that you have lived so far yes. uh, that you wanted all the listeners to make sure to get, what piece of advice is that? Uh, um, here I go again with my noises. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, it I, just tells me I'm asking good questions. Yes, <laughs> you are. Because you're causing me to think. And this is great. Um, I think if I had one piece of advice, it's so corny, but this is the perfect way to end on a corny note. Yeah. Um, I use like this is probably my quote from my high school, um, <laughs> my high school yearbook. Easily bring up the yearbook. Yes, but I. I Hold on, and can we get Raven's photo? Yes, I know. High it school the, yearbook. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but it's a, it's a beautiful. It's it's corny, but it is very. It's it's what I'm implementing in my life, and it's. The quote that says, shoot for the moon, because even if you don't make it, at least you'll land amongst the stars. And I feel like that is what I'm trying to do in my everyday life, and I would encourage others to do as well. So shoot for the moon, have those big dreams, have those big goals, you know, do things that seem a little scary or seem impossible for you, because you never know that where you're going to land and it can still be someplace beautiful as well. So that would be my corny little way to end. That's the, that's <laughs> yes. the perfect way to end. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Raven Drummer, yeah. thank you so much for being here. Thank it was awesome to have you. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. Right now, I want you to think about someone else in your life that would benefit from this episode and send them the link. If you have not given us a review, I would so greatly appreciate it. I really appreciate looking at all of your comments and reviews. It really does mean a lot. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one right here at Get Seen. Thanks. (laughs) 